What's up, guys? This is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com, and I am happy to say that we are almost done with our tutorials of making a fade in and fade out without jQuery. And I hope you guys are learning tons of cool things that you can do with JavaScript, like set intervals and making the opacity of things change. And, you know, it, just making things like this, I just feel, is a lot cooler than just using jQuery because you learn a lot more about the language. But hey, that's just me, and hopefully you feel that way too since you're watching these tutorials. So if you see where we left off, I just have my alert at opacity cleared when it should be so they should only show once and if we validate this and refresh the browser fade out opacity cleared okay and it only shows me that once and if I refresh then it's back but remember all we had with fade in is we click it and it should go to point five. Oh, I don't even have my fade in here anymore so I actually have to create my function fade in and if we remember, we passed two parameters here, so it was ID and seconds. So fade out and fade in are going to look extremely similar, except for a couple of small little differences. So I'm actually going to copy everything that's in fade out, and I'm just going to tweak this code. So the very first thing we see in fade in is there is a um, declaration or initialization of opacity to one and the reason we did this is because we wanted fade in or mirror fade out to start at one and continue to drop back the opacity because that's how you make things become see-through but when we're fading in something we want to start at zero and move up to one so since we want to go from zero to one we should actually initialize this and start it at zero Okay, so then we get to interval, and what interval does is it just takes seconds, multiplies it by 10, and makes that the interval, so that we can use the interval here. That's not going to change, because we still want it to move at the same rate that fade out is moving, so that's the same. Now, we have this out listener here. What I want to do is I want to change this from out listener to in listener, because this is the fade in listener. So let's copy this, and let's paste in listener here and then we remember that we have to send in listener in the parameter so make sure in listener is different here and the last thing we need to change in here is you see we're actually calling a function called fade out interval but what we really want to call is fade in interval bam done this whole function is done nothing else to do so what do we do next we copy this and now we make a function called fade in interval paste that in there change fade out to fade in so now when this method is called it will jump here instead of here all right so we remember that we are sending in listener now so we have to send in listener here and then we will clear the interval of in listener here and actually I want to get rid of this alert we don't need that anymore we already know that works so I want to get rid of that up here too get rid of alert and get rid of alert okay so now we are sending in listener here so let's get to this line of code what this is saying is every time I get the opacity I want to subtract 0.1 so if you remember in the fade out we started at 1 and then we would subtract 0.1 and go to 0.9 then 0.8 then 0.7 then 0.6 but we want to do the opposite here we want to start at 0 and we want to go to 0.1 them to point 0.2 then to point 0.3 all the way up to 1 so in order to add point 0.1 each time all we have to do is change this to plus simple as that then we still want to set the opacity with whatever opacity is here and we still want to send that same div ID so that does not change but this actually does change let's think about this one before we started at 1 we got to zero, then we went under zero, and we said stop it. Clear the interval the second you do one under zero. But here, we want to start at zero opacity, and we want to move up to one, and then the second we get to 1.00001 or whatever it is, stop it. So actually, when we get greater than one, we want to stop this function. So all you say is greater than one. And this will effectively clear the interval so that this set interval will stop and it won't keep doing it an infinite number of times. You never want to have an infinite loop in your problems. You'll get fired for sure. So we just have to save this. That is it. 
we still call the same set opacity function. And as you can see, these two functions are very similar. So if you wanted to be extremely efficient, you could just make one method called fade and have all of it done in there and then be able to tweak these things saying if you pass another parameter here that was something like out or in and then you would change these values. You can do that if you like. I just did it this way so that if you want to do a fade in, you call the fade in function. You want to do a fade out, you call the fade out function. Just like it is here fade out, fade in. So you can do it either way. You can just make a function called fade if you want, pass one more parameter, say if it's in or out, and then do the tweaks there. That'd be great practice, but for all intents and purposes, this is all we're doing. So let's check if it works. So I'm going to refresh this browser, and I'm going to fade out, and then I'm going to fade in. Boom. Simple as that. Fade out, fade in. And all we have to do from now on, you can copy and paste this code or you can write it over and over again every time you want to do it to really practice. But now all we will ever have to do is change fade out and just make sure we give the right div ID of what we want to fade out and then we just do this number. So just really like jQuery now, we have created a nice simple function so that all we have to do is call it and then it will do all the heavy lifting for us. So if we said that we wanted both of these to happen in one Second, that we would just refresh this page and it would go boom, boom, simple as that. So now we have made our own jQuery function, but with no jQuery. So I hope you guys have liked this tutorial and I hope you guys have learned quite a bit about JavaScript by going through this tutorial. You might not have known that we would be able to set the opacity of all these different things or add it in or subtract it or whatever, but the end result came out the way that we wanted. So now you can incorporate this anywhere on your site where you wanted to show something, now you can show it elegantly or you wanted to hide something, you can hide it elegantly. So um, this has been Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com. I hope there are people out there enjoying these tutorials. Please subscribe if you like what you see and always feel free to send me a message and say, hey Chris, do you know how to do this? I'd love to see a tutorial on it because I'm always open to um, I'm always open to interpretations and all that kind of stuff. So thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have found this tutorial useful. I love making them for you and I will see you guys in the next series.